Rightio, this is the part two of the ants versus the redback spider after the battle. And I'll have a warning up here, you know, spider, 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 ants, 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 danger, danger, danger. And I'll show up some slow motion footage or slowed up video from that battle, which was quite intense. And the ants, of course, uh, were able to pull down the redback spider in an ant sort of way. What was sort of crazy, apart from the ants, were the comments being landed on that video. And I think I had billions of variations on how the ants actually operated. Some people said they were spraying some toxins and other people said they had like a magic wand that they could weave in front of a redback spider. I personally think they were just biting. And then other people were saying, well, the redback spider killed over because it was in the sun. I think one of the most alarming aspects was the variation of things that were being said and also the variation on the identification of the ants. Now, ants must be a very complex thing to understand and also identify. One thing I would note was, to me, the ants reminded me of the villains from Star Trek The Next Generation, one of my favourite villains called the Borg. They worked as a collective, and I think the ants also work as a collective as well. And once that collective has you in their sights, you're a goner. Slowing this video up starts to reveal things that you just didn't see in the other video because the ants were moving so fast, especially when they were in attack mode. And to be honest, all I can see going on is I think the ants are just biting the legs of the redback spider. I can't really see anything else uh, being sprayed or things being stung. But one thing I did notice was that when the ants decided to come in for an attack, it was very organized and it was done with multiple ants. There were times when the redback spider could get around the arena uh, without much interference from the ants. And then there were times when the ants went into that frenzied, crazy attack mode. And that's sort of really scary when you start to see that. The redback spider, when it was being attacked, it did look like it was going to kill over and die. And it was on its back for a while there. And then it sprung back to life in sort of like a second wind fashion. But the ants didn't give up. And the real intensity of the biting and attacking happened over a 10 minute period. But all up, the redback spider was in this ant arena for 40 minutes. And with this video slowed up, I don't see any of that super sticky web that the redback spider uses against enemies at all when the ants were attacking it. And I found that to be quite surprising because every time I've seen an opponent against the redback spider, they use this extremely sticky web that entraps anything that gets into it. There's one very common thing between the redback spider and these ants, and it's something which is a very important survival skill and it's the ability to be able to live in an environment which is unnatural. Uh, both of these critters are very successful in building up places to live in areas which are basically man-made. And what's really important here is the speed of turning a new environment into a home. Both these critters can do it really fast. So poor old Mrs. Female Redback Spider lays dead there after many multiple ant bites. Horrible way to die. And then part two of the show is going to be the ants coming along and pulling apart the redback spider to take down to their lovely ant colony. It was only a couple of weeks ago when I flamethrowed some redback spiders. And was able to serve up some lovely half cooked delicacies to the ants. And it didn't take them very long to pull those down to the ant nest. So I set up a time-lapse camera and the day was coming to an end in a couple of hours and to my surprise what I noticed going on was not what I expected to see. For some reason the ants just left the spider there and there wasn't really the feeding frenzy and pull down of the spider that I expected to see. So this had me a little bit confused and bewildered to what exactly was going on here. And sure enough the day ran out of light and this rolls over to the next day. This is the next day and um, well one problem I've had is I ran out of daylight and the ants didn't initially take to the spider and I don't want Fluffy to eat the spider. The redback is still there and it looks like today the ants being the second day uh, might come along and uh, devour the spider. One of the problems with uh, making videos outdoors is you're up against uh, the different bits of daylight and sunshine you get and weather and today it's probably going to rain and I'm just hoping the ants are going to come along and tidy up the spider. So yes I'm using some artificial lighting there uh, they are LED uh, well lights uh, don't get too excited by them I find they don't last that long but the main thing I'm up against is actually Fluffy our stray cat who's now sort of our cat has been so inquisitive of what I'm doing up here 
I just hope she doesn't come along and wreck the video for me. I'm going to try and get some time left, Fluffy. Hey, you've got to try and just leave it be, okay? Don't come in and be a star in the time lapse. Is that okay? Listening to me? Don't think she's listening to me. Well, I'll set the time lapse off again. It may uh, capture what I want to see. Then again, I can't tell the ants, hey, ants eat the spider. They're going to do whatever they want to do. I've noticed that with ants. I've got no idea why Fluffy is licking stuff here. What's on this? What were you licking on that? I'll oh, probably just a little bit of dew. Yeah, it's weird with cats. Uh, you can put bowls of water out and they'll basically ignore them and they'll go and drink uh, from some very, very uh, rancid sort of places, which I don't understand why. Well, hopefully the ants are going to be a little bit more interested today. I'm really uh, going to have to let nature play out whatever game it wants to play. When you're making a video, I think I've learned always expect the unexpected and expect things not to work <laughs> your way. And I will uh, just let you know on the second day of trying to capture a time lapse of the ants uh, eating the spider, uh, well, the spider was ignored even more. Okay. Now, the only thing I'm thinking is this was right in between uh, periods of very, very heavy rain, like record rainfall that had been going on at my place. I'm not sure whether the ants had sort of moved their main colony on up to mummy's tubs because I got video of them putting eggs up higher. Uh, I'm not sure because the ants had bitten that spider so many times it was full of their own toxins. I don't understand. It really surprised me uh, to find that the ants totally ignored that dead spider there. And from what I know with ants is whenever there's a meal around, they will take it. So maybe my audience has a very clear understanding and a wisdom that I don't have in trying to work out what is going on here. There was a tiny little bit of interest shown by a couple of ants. Uh, but I, I started to feel like I'm just wasting my time uh, looking at these small things in the garden. I was expecting grand things to happen and these never occurred. It was a stark reminder to me that sometimes when you're shooting nature, it can be horribly underwhelming. You know, uh, sometimes it just doesn't happen like you'd like it to happen. This uh, breadback spider has had basically a day and a half under time-lapse photography and I was hoping the ants were going to pull it to the pieces and sh you know, rip it to shreds. Um, but the ants haven't done that for me. I know there'll be some ant experts who'll tell me what's going on here. I know nothing about ants and why they eat things and why they don't. What I am going to do is take this redback spider to somewhere uh, where I know there are some very, very vicious ants. Yeah, that red back is still nice and fresh, even though it's a day and a half old. I did shoot some behind the scenes stuff so you can see the gear that I used and the little problems that I had when I was out in the garden playing with the spiders and the ants. Maybe some of my audience will be interested in this, but talking camera gear and lights can be horribly dry. So I'm shooting this on my iPhone. Uh, that's the camera I use for the time lapse. It's a JVC camera which I've been using on my channel for many years. Uh, yeah, uh, been good for toy reviews. I like where the microphone is set up on this camera. And if I go back here, I've got a uh, Manfrotto arm or magic arm, as some people call them. It's a fantastic bit of camera gear. And what is just normal is it's just a normal umbrella I've got to cover this up. And because the sort of sun is a bit uh, doubtful today, I've set up some LED lights uh, uh, that aren't that exciting because they don't last very long. Nothing like new technology is there. Come on ants, please play for me, please. I don't want to come back here eight hours later and see the spider still sitting there. Okay, I've got an intruder in there. This is the problem, you see. You set up something special and... Yeah, it's okay, busted. Busted, you saw that? That was Bluebell. I'm gonna eat that redback spider. Bluebell, please leave that area alone. I know you're gonna totally ignore me. And that doesn't mean you can terrorize Fluffy. Hey, leave Fluffy alone, please. Crikey, these cats cause trouble here. Go on, go on, leave Fluffy alone, please. What are we gonna do, Fluffy? That bluebell, always after you, hey? Always after you. You're hiding in the grass, you're hoping the birds can't see you, aren't you? And you're looking just backwards there, cause Bluebell's behind me now. 
Sorry for the non-event sort of ending. Uh, it, sometimes the magic just doesn't happen, and if I get that spider to be pulled apart by ants, I can put it up as a separate video. I don't sign off like I used to, and I really don't know what to say. Well, I do know what to say. I can't stand these newfangled LED lights that just keel over in no time at all.